Hello everyone and welcome back to another video with On Point Politics and today we're going to be looking at Trump's best case scenario in the 2024 presidential election. Hit the like button and subscribe for more content just like this. And so looking at the former President Trump's best case scenario, we have seen that a lot of polling data suggests that Harris is ahead in the national popular vote. Now my model does have Harris winning the national popular vote by about two points. However, I am constructing a new model that essentially tracks the trends in every single county and you apply your own popular vote margin and then you kind of get results here. I have only done it for the major swing states and I'm still going through the process of correcting the errors of the 2020 version. The only states that I have tested back to 2020 are Wisconsin and Michigan. And when you look at it being a tied electorate, you actually see that Wisconsin's voting like six points to the right of the nation, and so is Michigan. This may be due to the fact that the former president's probably gaining with white working class voters and is also gaining with African American voters to a large extent, and that's what's really pushing these trends here. And so over time, we're going to be able to get a more accurate picture of what the electorate's really looking like with this county map model, and then based on the turnout which I'm going to be applying a turnout model at some point to this so you could kind of experiment with some of the state margins because more than likely the African-American turnout is probably going to be lower. So you may have, you know, Michigan be a, probably a larger victory or maybe even Georgia is greater than a tied margin in this stage of the game. So that's essentially what we're looking at right now. And right now, the former president, yes, he's down, but... Even people like Rasmussen are saying that that's not the real lead. Trump's actually up by four points in the national popular vote, which their average of their last three polls with Trump v. Harris has her up or him up by about 4.3%. And if that's the case, he is definitely performing very, very well in the Electoral College. And so today we're going to be looking at a Trump plus four to five national popular vote victory as the best case scenario. And so looking at this, the safe states would be the same ones from, you know, the official projection. You know, all these states have been voting safe Republican for quite a while. We are now adding Alaska into this column. We are now adding Florida, Texas, Iowa, and Ohio into this column as well as South Carolina. Kind of starting to look like my older predictions. We'd also have uh, Nebraska's first in the at-large vote. And Maine's second congressional district would be in the safe column. So all of these would be over 15 point victories in this case maybe if it's like r plus four maybe texas is like under 15 points but florida more than likely would be over a 15 point win in the best case scenario i think california is still actually going to be safe i think harris is doing a lot better with some liberal type voters i also think that more than likely dc maryland massachusetts and vermont would be in that you know safe column scenario for harris because more than likely she would kind of still hold on like her floor with white suburbanite voters is a lot higher than biden's was and that's really going to affect you know some of the margins here but her floor with african americans and hispanic voters especially hispanics i'd argue is actually worse and so this map's gonna look a little funny because essentially you're basically kind of putting all of the best possible demographics for Trump on one map. And so it is going to look a little strange. If you look at North Carolina, more than likely this would be an 11 point victory in this forecast. I think it would trend to the right in this case because Donald Trump would be gaining with African-American voters. I also think Georgia is roughly the same. I think he'd probably win it by eight or nine while winning the popular vote by four. You know, obviously black turnout would be kind of down he'd be getting about 30% nationwide, which Rasmussen, who's a more accurate pollster, you know, they actually do have those numbers. And his average performance is actually about 18% in the latest polls with the higher 20s being on the higher end of that. So a 30% vote share with African-Americans definitely is the best case scenario for Trump. So these two states, the margins would be super easy uh, for Donald Trump to win. Now, looking at, you know, the Rust Belt, more than likely in this case, Donald Trump probably maxes out with white working class voters. That gets him the Rust Belt fairly easily. Wisconsin's probably like a seven to eight point win. 
Michigan like five to six and Pennsylvania like six to seven. So even in this best case scenario, he's not winning these states by as much as he was even against Biden. I actually had Wisconsin as like a 10 point win. So I don't even think he could win it by that much anymore. If we look at the likely, you know, states as well, more likely Republican states, Arizona would probably be in this column. It'd probably be like a five to six point win. I don't think Trump could win it by any more than six or seven now. Nevada, I think in this case, would actually trend super hard to the, to the right. I think it would be an 11 point victory. And the reason why I'm saying this is because you have Clark County. And if this is Trump's best case scenario, I think he wins Hispanics by 10 nationwide in his ultimate best case. And Nevada has a lot of those. And so that's why you see Florida and Nevada kind of really zoom, you know, to the right in this forecast. Texas only is like a 13, 14 point victory because of a lot of the white suburban voters kind of moving to the left still looking at the likely states i think oregon and washington would be in the likely column oregon would probably be a seven point win washington about nine points this also assumes that third party turnout is very high like third parties combined for like 10 percent. so that's going to also affect some of the margins as well looking at hawaii i think this one could go down to at least eight to nine points in a best case scenario for trump uh, with Harris winning it, I don't think Trump's going to be able to pick it off this cycle. Now, with Trump maxing out with white working class voters, you're going to see a surge in the Rust Belt, unlike no other. And a state like Virginia may actually be a pretty easy flip, including New Mexico as well. These would be, you know, relatively easy flips because if he's maxing out with his white vote share, which is probably like plus 25 nationwide, he's probably going to win Virginia and New Mexico by a couple points. I'd also say at that point, Colorado probably ends up going down to like a three or four point victory. Donald Trump and a lot of the polling, when you adjust for the cross tabs, is actually winning college educated voters outright. And so Colorado, Minnesota, you know, the Rust Belt, like a lot of places have these, you know, colleges and educated towns. So more than likely, if Trump maxes out with that group, certain states like Colorado may trend, you know, to the right even in this case, which I find very unlikely, but again, best case scenario. Now, Illinois is very interesting. I actually think this would be Tilt Harris in a best case scenario because let's say Trump is gaining with white working class voters in the southern part of Illinois and is maxing out getting possibly, I mean, if we look at Cook County, if we if we look at that county, I mean, it, it went very heavily for uh, Clinton and Joe Biden. But if Trump you know, in the state, if he's really getting, you know, about, you know, 35%, if he's getting 30% of blacks nationwide when he only got 12% here, his vote share in Chicago is probably going to be like 35, you know, almost 40, which would be pretty crazy if that happened. But I'd say 35 to 40 points in his vote share would be the most realistic if he's winning 30% nationwide. And so, if that ends up being the case, I do think Illinois could actually get really, really close. I think Minnesota is, is going to probably be lean two in the best case. I think it's like maybe one to two points or something like that. Probably around that margin. Connecticut, Rhode Island, Delaware. I actually think Delaware in the best case scenario could be under five, but I don't think it would flip. Uh, Maine's first would go likely. I think Maine at large would be lean as well as New Hampshire. And Nebraska's second would be lean as well. And we have these last two states here. I think if Trump really maxes out, I think he could get New York within at least five. But again, Harris does better with, you know, more hardline Democrats. And so in a best case scenario for Trump against Biden, I actually say he could have picked it off. But I don't think he can against Harris. So that would be probably a three point victory. And then New Jersey would be really, really close. But I think that Harris would still end up winning it regardless and that's it. This is his best case scenario. Trump at 347 to 191. I mean, with Biden, I mean, he was pretty much at his ceiling. Trump was at his ceiling. Yes, you know, the debate was so bad for Biden that he was practically expanding the map into, you know, New Jersey just because of how bad the debate was. And that was like a serious question. Like, New Jersey may actually be in play. But I think even with Harris, I still think she'd win Illinois and New Jersey, even in like an ultimate best case scenario for Trump. I think she'd still hold on to them regardless. And this is the map. If you guys want me to do a best case scenario for Harris, 
I think that would be pretty interesting to look at because she can actually win, unlike Biden. I actually think she has a few paths to victory. And so if you guys did enjoy this, make sure to hit the like button and to subscribe if you want more content just like this. And I will see you guys in the next video.